Like, who here is like me and never knew about Basa uh, <laughs> uh, language? Maybe language you the knew, writing. but the writing. Who didn't know like me? All, all of you. None so of the you rest knew. of you all knew about all the different <laughs> scripts in West Africa. <laughs> Yeah, and and that's that's one of the first things we still we still believe that we are mainly an oral culture, an oral tradition. That's oral tradition, tradition that we have not written, you know, and and we don't have that type of legacy um, that we can go back to, except what you what you hear from storytellers and stuff. Yeah. But when you go to to some of the relics, you know, that we left, because most due to the the climate. We were not writing on paper. We were mostly writing on on um, on stones, you know, on metal and stuff. That uh, or some of it has been destroyed. A lot of it, is, some, a lot of it was of, destroyed yeah. with colonialism as well. Yeah, like, I mean, there's a lot of manuscripts mm -hmm. in Mali right now, yeah. which and suddenly Mali is under you know a lot of um, political stress and and mm -hmm. things being destroyed and. and yeah. Yeah, so so the the Tombuktu museum has has been attacked years from now, and then most of uh, you know the treasure we had are also destroyed, and that's that's you know another way of trying to civilize people because it's people who came and were like, why would you use this because it's not it's not pure Islam, for example, and then they come to civilize populations who have their own their way of expressing yeah. their beliefs and stuff, and who just want to erase what they found in, in, in um, you know, on site. And that's that's what also colonialism did and is still doing. So I think it's, it's, um, it's very difficult, but, but we need to be engaged in yeah. making that comeback, you know, knowing exactly who we are, what we have achieved in the past and right. how to also bring it back. Right. Because I, I do believe that, you know, the the cycle of of life is just like today it's your turn but if next generation back, you know around, maybe yeah. another civilization will be revived yes. hopefully with all the the amount of exposure we are having you know and and what people also did before us we will be able to absolutely bring back the yeah, african yeah. pride yeah thank you so much for that so um okay. now i just wanted us to explore the types of of opportunities that exist in the in the oh okay so still inviting us to speak louder please okay, because sorry, of the sorry, people yeah. who are at the back yeah, yeah. so um, just wanted us to discuss the opportunities that exist in the um, you know creative industry like what are the gaps that exist and that you know young people could come on board and help fill but at the same time, how is also the art um, industry contributing in economic sustainability? Yeah. yeah. Um, like globally, the, the creative industries would include anything from television, mm -hmm. visual arts, film, music, architecture, um, various types of design, writing, mm -hmm. and things like that. That is all considered part of the uh, creative economy. And, um, you know, it's probably one of the largest uh, sectors of wealth generation in, mm. in, in the, in the globally. Mm. Um, I think in 2015, if I remember correctly from the research that I've done, it generated something like $2.25 trillion just mm. from the creative sector alone. Mm. Yet Africa's contribution to that is less than 1%. And you mm. know, when you think about us as um, African people, a lot of the, even the modern culture, um, is based on, is rooted in African culture. So why are we not um, benefiting from that? Mm -hmm. You know, I think if we had more focus on the creative economy, on on the human capital, you know, we would probably see more development. I mean, we've been digging iron ore in this country for mm -hmm. I don't know how many years now, mm -hmm. yet people are still living in poverty, even mm -hmm. in places like Kono, where they're digging out diamonds worth millions and millions of dollars. People only recently got light, you know, some of them. Um, so maybe if we focused on our human capital, on the creative economy, uh, the broad, broad creative economy, maybe we would see more in our development. And I think in places like Nigeria, Nollywood and the music are generating a lot 
a lot of uh, money, but how much is being generated in Sierra Leone in, in the music sector, in the art sector, mm -hmm. um, film, are we really generating anything? This is also an area where we as a people can probably compete on an equal footing with other people yeah. because creativity mm -hmm. comes from inside. Mm -hmm. It's not something that somebody can take away from you or replicate, it comes mm -hmm. from inside, from each person. Mm -hmm. So each of us has something inside of us what, that we can create, only we can create. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can replicate it. Mm -hmm. um, so if we yeah. explore that and develop that, I think you know mm -hmm. we could develop our country. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think people need to change the way that that's, that's looked at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate the, the fact that you mentioned the uniqueness in, yeah, each, person. in each person. Yeah, yeah. Because some, sometimes we look at um, the big picture, we look at the issues we have, and we do just think like, how can I change anything? Everything is, is chaotic. Right. There is no, no need for me to try. But if we all bring one brick, to the edifice then soon it will it's look okay. like something yeah. uh, enjoyable so yes having you know people come come on board and i do think or oh, i'm curious to know if it's related to the to the difficulty of accessing materials so because why is it that people are not thriving in like the creative industry is not thriving in Sierra Leone? i think it's, it's it's also a question of um the mindset as i said like mm. i mean i wanted to be when I was younger, maybe about 10, 15, you know, I said to my parents, I'm going to be a graphic designer. And mm. they, they were horrified. They said, no, no way, you mm. know. And I, I bargained with them and, you know, to try and see if how I could get into something that was in the creative field. Mm. And they were not happy with it. The only thing they would allow me to do was fashion design, which was something that I did not really, it mm. didn't resonate really with me, um, although I did it, you know. but. Um, eventually you know people focus on things you know, african families believe that in order to be successful you should be a doctor you should be a lawyer you should be an engineer that sort of thing mm -hmm. those are the, mm -hmm. the only ways that they can yeah. see success you know um somebody who is an artist is not really looked upon as um mm. serious or successful you know so i think if we can change that mindset which is what we as the ballet are trying to do tra trying to change that perception mm -hmm. of art um, then I think, you know, we as a people, maybe we'll start exploring other ways of um, developing our nation, you know. Mm -hmm. We have amazing musicians and things like that, but even for them, I think it's kind of hard. They don't have the legal protection that they need mm -hmm. to generate the, 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 yeah. um, the full potential of income that they could generate, mm -hmm. the, the piracy and things yeah. like that, you know. Mm -hmm. and we, but we do have... I think there is a film sector, there's theater and all sorts of things in Sierra Leone, but they're, they're not getting, I don't think they're getting the support that they need. And I don't think people themselves are, um, they don't aspire to produce it themselves. Like with us in the Barret, it's all been us. We haven't had anybody from outside Sierra Leone helping us or guiding us or anything like that. It's just our own initiative mm -hmm. that we've taken to build something because we believe that we mm -hmm. could do it. And um, yeah, so we're, we're moving forward with that. And hopefully, as, you know, more people will, will start doing the same thing. And as I said, like even in December, we had a number of, of different, we had mm -hmm. three different exhibitions, you know, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, it's great. That's cool. So, so if we are um, still talking about the gaps and areas in which new entrepreneurs could come on board in the sector mm -hmm. i would i would um i'm gonna ask it in a, in another way is like what what is the need for example when you guys at the ballet you ladies at the ballet come uh to, to create you yeah. know what what is the need yes access to materials sometimes it can be even venues yeah. uh where you can do exhibitions and stuff but what what else do you need that you really would like to see in sierra leone and that maybe young people out there would would have the creativity or the ambition of bringing on board um we just we need support we need um we're trying to build that interest in in art as well both locally and um you know internationally we mm. want um it, it, we want to change people's as, as i said perception mm -hmm. uh in terms of creative people so that they can see that yes I can create something mm. I could you know mm -hmm. uh, move forward in, in that direction mm -hmm. and also the people here to appreciate yeah. art and you know mm -hmm. to, to invest in it and, and want to see it thrive mm -hmm. so 
said, I mean, like now, like Nigeria, which has a long tradition, you know, they're, they're generating record-breaking art sales. Mm-hmm. You have art, artists selling pieces of work for well over millions of, uh, a million dollars, you know. Mm-hmm. And so any, anybody in this room who's an artist could probably do the same thing. There's nothing that, you know, mm-hmm. stops a young artist from Syria and from doing the same. Why not? Mm-hmm. You know, why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and most of the time it's not, it's not only embarking into the sector as a singer or as a painter mm-hmm. but more as as uh, somebody who identifies opportunities mm-hmm. in terms of problems what yeah. other people see as problems and then you fill that gap mm-hmm. and uh you know you you guys need so much um of visibility yes, you know, yeah so maybe photography because it's not it's not yeah. a, a a sector that is really well invested in mm-hmm. by youth, I mean. Mm-hmm. You know, so you see people who, who are standing out, but they are so few that they're also overwhelmed by the demand yeah. and they cannot offer to everybody, you know. So I think if we thinking of like how to embrace this sector, it's more of what are we lacking? Where, right. What is it that we don't have? And then those young people come in and feel it. But it's also not something that will happen overnight. Mm-hmm. I mean, it takes time. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Senegal, Senghor started the um, the Biennale, the yeah. Art Biennale, mm-hmm. you know, and that, that was in the early 90s or so, or the early, early 70s, 80s, even 90s, 70s, yeah. late 70s, I think. Yeah. And um, the, it took a while. But I mean, now the Dakar Biennale is something that is international. Mm-hmm. Uh, people come from all over the world to... Mm-hmm to attend that art fair and it and it generates a lot of money for the economy mm-hmm. as well. So I mean it's something that we build and you know it will it will grow. Mm-hmm. And you are right to say that it doesn't happen overnight because mm-hmm. even in the case of Senghor and whatever he did for Senegal, you appreciating it, but the population itself was resisting it yeah. so much that I said, right. oh, we are we are not lucky we have a poet as a president yeah. and he's <laughs> only um, giving priority to culture, to arts and music, you know, and then even that, even later with the the erection of that great, great statue, statue yeah, that now yeah. is bringing so much to the economy. Yes, people were resisting. So I think it it has to do with communication, mm. with also and you changing know, the perception and of, perception of changing. Arts. Yeah, it's and so culture. True. We should value our art and culture, you know. But mm-hmm. I think it's like we've been we've been bombarded with images so many negative images that we don't have any appreciation for what we produce ourselves Mm -hmm. you know everything everybody wants something that comes from outside Mm -hmm. and even when it comes down to things like food in in the grocery people want you know um, chicken that comes from brazil they don't want to eat local chickens or whatever they want jam or this or that Mm -hmm. that comes from abroad they don't want the local product but we need to have pride in our own selves in order for us to to really achieve what we can achieve we need to believe in ourselves and and you know see that potential mm-hmm. and um, not be limited mm-hmm. you know by other people's ideas of what they think we are but we need to know ourselves first mm-hmm. and i think that artists have a role to play in that musicians have a role to play in that you know uh, filmmakers storytellers yeah. it's all very important you know to, to change that perception once that perception changes and everything else Mm-hmm. will start to change mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what, what that inspires me to, to share is, mm-hmm. like for those creatives who are on site and who are doing amazing work, just for them not to stop, because it yeah. it's a long road, it's very hectic and, and sometimes not, um, not rewarding. But, you know, um, because people are also struggling to find their way into reconnecting with their history and who they are mm-hmm. it it will take time but it will still uh you know reap the benefits right because, because that, that's what happened with other civilizations yeah. for them to now you know be regarded as as the the the, the examples mm-hmm. it, it it has to it had to um, go through what we went through and some of those civilizations even did not suffer from colonialism right yeah right. so being colonized is like it was a blow yeah. to to our nations and all, and uh, and yeah. I do believe it's, it's something that we will achieve one day, right. hopefully. Yeah. So uh, let's just please explore the importance of branding and marketing in in the creative sector. 
Yeah. So how important is but, it? But that is, it's part of advertising and branding mm -hmm. is considered part of the creative sector. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, as for a visual artist, I think it's really important that you have your own signature style and you know, the quality of your work and your reputation, you know, it's, it's, it's all connected and that's mm -hmm. how you build a brand and become, you know, mm -hmm. an artist that is sought after. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's not quite maybe i don't know if i've answered your question mm -hmm. yeah rightly. you did yeah, but, um, mm -hmm. thank you so much for that um so the the the, the curiosity is like the, most of most of entrepreneurship is so stressful most right, of right. It. but like as creatives you put so much for you to create one thing you know so it's so stressful and and so uh, absorbing in terms of in mm -hmm. terms of energy and all so just wanted to know how do you escape you know that that vicious circle of, of stress how do you renew yourself and then make sure that your inspiration still uh, your source of inspiration is, is still filled um, well, I think that most creative people are inspired by stress you know mm -hmm. um, sometimes it, this, the stress <laughs> that you have to go through does inspire you to create um, mm. in, in different ways, you know. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's hard to, I think the, when, when it comes to maybe an exhibition or something that you're going to do maybe as a group, then you have to maybe depend on a whole load of different people working mm. together. Mm -hmm. And that can be the kind of unwanted stress. You saw how I mm. looked in that video <laughs> because of you know, trying to mm. coordinate yeah. different things. Mm -hmm. You have carpenters, electricians, um, mm. venues okay. that are hosting yeah. you, all mm -hmm. sorts of things and getting artwork together. Those mm. sort of stresses um, are difficult to cope with. But in terms of the day-to-day -day life stress, I think that can somehow I think you've managed to turn that into something that is um, mm. um, creative. You know, mm -hmm. you see like a lot of musicians maybe write love songs out of heartbreak and things like that, you know, mm. it, it, it all, <laughs> it, it's always something that's always useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so trying to overcome, you yeah, know, what we like in, in, struggles, yeah, poetry, in case of a heartbreak, writing, instead yeah. of just like sinking, yeah, then you yeah, use, it use it to, to uplift to maybe other people who are going through yeah, that, but yeah. still get out, get the head out of the water. Right. It's really important. Really important. So, um, you know, talking again about Africa, because because that's what we have, that's yeah. who we are and all. So, um, you know, what what's, as I was saying, it, it looks sometimes too much to do for one nation, especially the youth. It's like, oh, we inherited all this and we have to fix it. You know, sometimes it's not fair, I know. But when you look at it, in terms of the creative industry, we have so much to do. We have yeah. we have a long way to pave. When it comes to technology, we are lagging behind. When it comes to owning our own educational system, we yeah. are we are we are not there yet because it's still a colonized educational system that we have. Yeah. So it seems that Africa is fighting from left and right and everywhere from different fronts. So how are we gonna win a battle wherein you know you have to spread your soldiers everywhere? <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if I have the answers to that, but mm. I mean, I think the, mo the first thing is that we need to understand, you know, what, where we are and what we're doing. Mm. And, and, you know, because a lot of people, the colonization on the ground might be over, but it's still, you know, col their yes. minds are still colonized. Mm. Their, their ways of thinking about themselves and about, you know, the, the continent is still... Um, dictated by others without la mm. with a lack of self knowledge and appreciation of, of ourselves. So maybe that may be the first part. Is just for us to wake up as a people mm. and and understand what we're doing. You know, we don't need to do everything the way that other people did it. Mm. We were the originators of civilization. Maybe we should be looking to our own um, p uh, history and past to understand how to to move forward. And how we should um, govern ourselves and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, um, and educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we need to wake up to the, with the way that the children are being educated in schools today, you know, as well. I mean, there's there's a lot to do, but I think we need to be conscious of it. We need to understand the mistakes that we're making. A lot of people just don't realize mm -hmm. their, their mistakes. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah. So so 
um, the thing would be like to to get deeply rooted into who we are, what yeah. we inherited, yeah. before embracing um, the rest of the world. Because, uh, like as Senghor, you you mentioned Senghor, he would always say that you know bef- we need to be porous to the rest of the world, like like a sponge, and you cut you you. Um, you asp- uh, aspire what do you get from them but before you go out to do that you need to first do the exercise of being do deeply rooted mm-hmm. into who you are into um, what you inherited so um, you know Senghor for example when he talks about about the Sere culture yeah it's amazing like how he fell in love with his own culture how he sings the beauty of his people mm-hmm. and of his culture but when you see also how he embraced the Western culture, and that's that's the the thing people focus on. Yeah. But yeah. what he did in terms of you know celebrating, reviving, yeah, and yeah. and singing his own culture is is amazing. So, um, you know, I'm I'm seeing that y- your source is is like the same as those those Pan African yeah. researchers who who did a great job into like it's not easy, but into digging deeper below surface to right. know exactly where we came from and what we But even that is, is not something that is widely talked about in mm. especially in our schools or you know universities in Africa. You know, um, a lot of our children are studying like Cambridge system or whatever, you know, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Um, and we don't value our own um, national things. Um, but but do we have you know what I mean? So we have Cambridge system of teaching. Yeah. But like do we is, have what like did it teach us? Hmm? What, did, what did it teach us? As I said, you know, I yeah. thought I was educated. I went under the Cambridge system. I thought I was educated, but no. Mm. Come to realize I, I wasn't. I, I was, you know, brainwashed, I guess you could mm-hmm. say, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that, um, I mean, when I was younger, I used to hear people talk about, oh, you know, Jesus was a black man. This was a black person. Black people did this. And I just thought they were crazy. I would hear them say it, and I, I think oh, they're just crazy. Of course, black people couldn't do anything like that, you know, because that's that's the way that I'd been conditioned. That's what I thought. But now looking into it, I realized that these people were correct. And I'm sure a lot of people here probably don't believe what we're saying, you know, when we say black people, you know, did this mm. sort of thing. So, um, yeah, and I think, I think as creative people we have a role to play and and, and mm-hmm. waking people up and I think that's the most important thing that needs to be done because you cannot move forward if you don't even know where you came mm-hmm. from you know you mm-hmm. cannot yeah. you remain in a trap mm-hmm. you know. yeah and as I was as I was asking you know that like do we have those those educational systems those schools that teach indigenous knowledge you know like like that are based on what Africa has mm-hmm. and in that sense I really admire the, the Eastern Africans because even if you look at how Swahili is now yeah. uh, you know being made like the, the, the official yeah. language yeah. In, in many of the, the Eastern African countries then you realize how um, you know how strong your own culture is and mm-hmm. how language also helps you channel um, mm. all that heritage Talking about now, you know, because I also was exposed to most of those those uh, theories like the Virgin Mary, Mary being mm. black and all that. Yeah. But then I think as Africans, what we also need to do is when we are exploring those those things, to make sure that we invite, you know, scientific way of ascertaining. Yeah. You know, so so that we make sure that this is based on archaeology. It's based yeah. on, on, you know, on facts yes, so yeah. that it can be something that is, um, you know, taught in, in schools or embraced by, by, yeah. by ourselves. And yeah. there's a, the thing about the Black Madonna, uh, apparently, in, even in churches in, in the West, where they have these images of uh, the Black Madonna, which was apparently based on um, Isis, the Egyptian goddess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, but then this was all changed into... Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes art has a way of preserving some uh, some of art can have a role in preserving you know the history. Mm. Like, I mean, when you look at the pyramids, you will see the the artwork on mm-hmm. that, which shows the role that black people played in there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you look at the Benin sculpture, so it show that shows mm-hmm. the skill that that black people had so many mm-hmm. centuries ago in terms of you know metallurgy and and creativity and art and all that. So art does have some way of also preserving our culture, the, the real uh, truth of our culture as well. Mm. So it does have that value as well. 
um, and talking talking about Benin, like the only thing I knew about Benin was they they practice voodoo. Yeah, that's exactly. it. <laughs> Growing up, I was like, oh, you are from Benin, you do voodoo. And... They can take your picture and and do you you and stuff like yeah. that. And not knowing that, that's what we bo- they bought. They, they stole they us stole. and what we accepted to believe of ourselves, you know, and it's a sad, it's, it's really sad to have been through all that, but, but um, very hopeful that we can rewrite our story and, and yeah. change the narrative ourselves. Yeah. So um, we'll end the discussions here and then uh, accept some questions from the audience. And uh, yeah, so back to you, Esther, for the question and answer session. Yes, so to Miss Jane Bangua, I've always believed that there's an artist in each individual and one just needs to tap into his talent to prove himself. But in Africa, not all of us appreciate art. In fact, most people think it's a waste of time. So what do you think is the main obstacle, the hurdle we need to overcome to prove to others who we are as artists? And how can we overcome it? Is it a mentality? Our parents may think that art is a waste of time instead of go to college, pursue a degree or something. Or is it just a fear within us that people may not appreciate what we do? Sierra Leone has a long and significant tradition of graving and ceremony on rocks, including Max and Club. In this year art, all those your artwork has impacted the life of Sierra Leoneans, especially the young ones in terms of your um, art and work because normally we, we've been involved in artworks like um, a framework in with words but we haven't seen any impact so you are an artist what are the tools you use in drawing my idea is that we want you to share this talent to the public can you open an industry for people to learn is drawing and painting hard what was your first design and how did you feel like? Do you have any challenges when you are about to draw? I want you to connect with your fellow artists, those carpenters, weldermans, tellers, so you so your drawing for others to learn or to design. I am Ali Conte. My question is how can we make art, especially painting, attractive to young people? As we know. Young people in Sierra Leone and Africa, as it has not been seen as a career by many. So how can we make it attractive so that we can get more young people into it? So, uh, the lady was asking about, you know, um, the obstacles that we have in the industry and how can we overcome that as artists? Because I guess she is, you're in the industry, you're also creative. Yeah. So how can we um overcome it and also she talked about like college pursuing your education versus um you know doing art yeah yeah um i i don't think it's a bad idea to get in an education as well i mean um it's always useful to have something to fall back on in case you know you don't um succeed in in your chosen field i mean for myself i took a long I, I wanted to do art, but then I, I put that aside and, and did um, law. And you know, even a lot of the artists that I work with now, uh, maybe there's only a handful that are full-time artists, but some of them are you know students or studying engineering and uh, computer science and um, business and things like that as well. Because it is not easy, you know. But I think it's something that you need to be dedicated to. It's specifically visual art, you need to be very dedicated to it and. Um, mm you need to um, work on it. It's, it's something that you need to, to keep practicing, you know? So like people were saying, how do you get an, an art education? I don't think we have any art schools in Sierra Leone at the moment mm-hmm. where you can obtain any sort of certificate or degree in, in fine art or um, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but art is also something that a lot of people are are self-taught i mean you practice Mm. you practice and practice a lot of very um well-known well-established famous artists um who are self-taught um so i think just taking the initiative yourself 
deciding that yes I can do something is yeah. always the first step to take um, rather than sitting around and waiting for somebody else to come and guide you or do it for you I think it, as, as I was saying with the barret um, with us we were we just decided on our own that we were going to build something for ourselves mm -hmm. you know and we did it um, so if you are interested in doing that sort of thing I think you need to take that initiative on yourself you can't wait for other people you can't use the fact that there's nobody there to guide you or hold your hand as a reason for not doing something mm. um, or you know like the government isn't giving me any money so I'm not mm. going to do it that that's you know that's your own um, you know, excuse for failure I think if you want to do something then you just have to you have to be determined and, and get into it mm. um, yeah, and as, as I said, we need to change people's perceptions. If artists can succeed, I think that will change people's perceptions. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, in um, Nigeria now, where artists are doing extremely well, and in, in Senegal and things like that, people's perceptions are changing. You know, a lot of young creative people are deciding, I want to focus on, on my art instead of, you know, um, mm -hmm. becoming uh, an, an engineer or, or whatever. I'd like to focus on my creativity, you know. And then, I mean, even if you are in another sector, you know, your creativity can play a role in that. I mean, it's always, it's required, it's needed in a lot of different fields. If you're an engineer or a, a, a builder in construction, I mean, there are ways of doing things that can make them, you know, make what you're creating more um, attractive or, you know, add to its aesthetic value. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people don't appreciate that either, you know, mm. and, and maybe yeah. they should see creativity and art as something wider. Not It's not just a drawing, mm. you know, it's a house. A house is a piece of art as well. It could be a piece of art. Even a pan body could be a piece of art, you know, if it's done properly, you know. Mm -hmm. so it's imagination. It's, it's, it's using your imagination yeah. and, and not being scared, you know, to mm. think outside of the box. I'll tell you a story about um, when we did an exhibition at um, at O'Casey's, which was a place mm -hmm. which was on the same Lumley Beach Road. It's now closed down. But it was a it was a nice space because it was very large and it was accessible to all sorts of people. So we were doing an exhibition. It was one of our earlier exhibitions, and um, they were there was also going to be a performance that night. Some young boys were coming in to do break dancing, and um, the person that brought them in said, you know, why didn't you come in? There's an exhibition, come and look at the art. And they said, no, we don't want to see art. We hate art. We don't want to look at it. Because there was already this perception of mm. what art is. You know, there's been this perception that African art should be, you know, a woman carrying water on her head or, you know, some sort of like musical instruments, traditional, this, that or the other. That's all art can be, you know. So they, they were not, they just were not interested in seeing it. You know, and the person that brought them kept pleading with them, come on, it's just five minutes, go in, have a look, you know. So when they went in and they saw the exhibition, they were, you know, overwhelmed. They couldn't believe it. You know, they were, you know, surprised that women were creating art. They were surprised at the sort of images that were mm. that they were seeing, you know, and the difference of, you know, like what creativity can be. And, um, you know, and then they started telling us about, you know, their friends who are artists and things like that. And I think that changed their perception. You know, it had an impact on them. If one of them is an artist, maybe that person will now think, well, maybe I should take this more seriously and maybe I can create, you know, a, a something great that will have an impact yeah. on other people. And I, I to, to, res to respond again for her, I do think that uh, she, she's not only an artist, a visual artist, but she's also an advocate an activist you know how she stands for for women for african heritage and all you know so that also impacts how african people relate to wow. themselves and how they pave their future and and how they identify themselves um i i do think so uh, another person was asking about the tools that you are using so are you also interested in opening an institute to teach um, people and I think he also talked about partnership with our local creatives like the carpenters, the, the tailors and stuff. So it's many many questions but I'm <laughs> I captured. Yeah. Well I am personally not um, opening an institute to teach people. I'm, I'm not um, in that position to do. Maybe in, a, in, a, in the future maybe it might mm. be something that I would consider but I'm not doing that right now. Um, 
in terms of partnering with other people, it's kind of it can be very difficult to do that um, here because I think people's ideas. I mean, people have different standards. First of all, you know, you know, maybe for example, one of the problems that we have as visual artists is getting a frame. A frame goes around a painting and it's supposed to beautify the painting, add to its value, and make it better. But a lot of times you'll get a carpenter to do it and mm. it's just not something that you would want to put on your painting. It's sort of, it, you know, so standards are different. Um, and I think that the more we create art and the more we create things, standards will change. I mean, just like with anything, I mean, people have hotels or whatever, and somebody comes along and builds a better hotel, then the other hotels will start trying to raise the bar. You know, the bar needs to be raised. Things mm. change as mm. we go on. So maybe if, as we continue, uh, um, a carpenter will say, well, you know, maybe I could create something that's, you know, at that level as well. So I think it's, it would, it's just a change in, in the whole consciousness of, of, of the people, you know, mm. um, but yeah. you can't get, I can't. Yeah, so the last question was how can we make art attractive to youth? And I think I you think covered it in your, yeah. your response. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much uh, so for much. for coming on this platform and for sharing you. these these felt you know, beliefs and then and and, and uh and talents and insights. Thank you so much. So I just wanted to um, highlight my own uh, nugget. So um, first of all, replying to going to college versus um, uh, practicing your art. I remember my discussion with Joel. I was like, why did you pursue? Why did you graduate in physics when you knew that it's music you wanted to do? He told me that it's like, I believe in education and I had to, like while going to music, to have a legacy for those young or, or like a role modeling even if you want to do this still acquire knowledge so mm -hmm. i don't think it's it's two paths that are contrary to each other you can pursue your 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 studies while investing in what you love what your um you know your true creativity leads you to doing also um just adding to what um how i said about we can compete with each other but I really would like to invite us African people to compete among ourselves. You know, the Sierra Leonean looking at the Nigerian and saying, I want to do what they have done. Or we look at the um, the Rwandans and we are like, oh my God, Rwanda is an, is an example in terms of institutional strength or South Africans. So we can do it because we share the same history. We have the same future and we can rewrite the story together so yes let's let's we can we can compete with with um anybody but let's still have um each other among africans as you know where we want the bar to be um just also wanted to come back on what she said uh, about you know who we are where do we come from and what do we have as an heritage really we by now should know that it's not, the table was not empty when they came to colonize us. It's because they were attracted by something. What is that something, you know? And, and that's what makes us who we are. We are rich of that heritage. You know, yes, something happened. It's a sad history, but we can still write the story in the way we want it by, by doing it with arts, with music and all that. Also, uh, just inviting all of us to focus on what is it that we don't know yet of Africa. You know, we didn't know about the Basa writing. I didn't know about the Adinkra symbols and all that. So what else is it that we don't know? And when are we going to start, you know, being more mm. curious, exploring, digging deeper about Africa? Okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, Pan-Africanism is something that I really think we need to consider instead of just always looking at the west and just like shying away you know always like looking inferior about mm -hmm. them but but i think what stands between us and pan-africanism is because the senegalese is looking down at the sierra leonean the sierra leonean is looking down at the nigerian the nigerian is looking down at the south africa because we they were dividing us to rule us Right. So now we need to take the reins, you know, and decide th that we can relate to each other because we are at the end of the day, 
all Africans. Mm -hmm. For you to know it, you need to go there. Then you will know that you are no different because they see only a black person, mm -hmm. an African. So yes, Pan-Africanism by embracing each other and sharing what we have. Um, I think also just like where I'm gonna end is education. You know, even when we're talking about the creative industry and what is lacking, what are the gaps? Okay, who among us is going to be creative enough to open an institute to even have position papers talking about how to decolonize our education? Mm -hmm. Everything starts with education. How we are educated, how we are wired, placed at us where we are now, still begging. You know, still being colonized, still being ripped of what we have, you know, of our, of our, our, our gold or our diamonds because of how we are educated. So whatever we are doing, let's not forget about the importance of that education, investing in it, indulging in it, and knowing that that's our two strengths. Okay, so those are the things I wanted to, uh, you know, leave all of us with. And uh, I also wanted to thank you so much. Uh, for your presence and for your patience with the technical issues we had today. Uh, and I also would like to invite you to join us on the next Ignition Hour in March, where we're going to celebrate women, because we always, in March, we always have women entrepreneurs. Platform is always men and women, but in March we have two women who are doing great, who are working in their industries, who come and, and talk to us about uh, what they're doing, how they're winning and all that. So thank you so much. See you next episode. Thank you. Thank you.